On September 20th, 1977, one Arthur Fonzarelli strapped on a pair of water skis and proceeded to literally jump a shark. On May 17, 2004, Bill Cosby stood up in front of a packed house, the NAACP, told young black Americans to stop wearing their hats on backwards and their pants down around their crack. On November 17, 2006, Michael Richards, the actor made famous by the role of Kramer on Seinfeld, took to the stage in a laugh factory and proceeded to have a meltdown. What do these three things have in common? Well, they are all prime examples of incidents in which a well-respected public figure willingly committed an unforgivable sin, forever driving their fans away in disgust. Today, Ink and Grow Rich will proudly become the latest casualty in the art of career suicide. It was nice knowing you. Should you or shouldn't you work for free? Every once in a while, I'll come across a Reddit post where some young artist is being offered a non-paying gig, and then they turn to the forums asking people if they should take it or not. Overwhelmingly, the responses are, no way, screw that guy. You can't pay your rent with exposure. Every single project out there, even the independent ones, are making money. Why shouldn't you get a piece of it? Your time and talents are worth money. Never work for free. In my opinion, Although well-intentioned, this is the single worst advice I've heard on the topic. If the opportunity presents itself, not only do I think that you should work for free, I'm gonna tell you why I think it's essential. I'll alert the media. Okay, right about now, I imagine that every artist watching this is just seething with outrage and absolutely tripping over themselves in a rush to rip into me. First of all, step away from the keyboard, you're just gonna embarrass yourself. Secondly, let me start by making one very important distinction. I am not talking about the Will Wheatons of the world who are being asked by the Huffington Post, a $50 million enterprise, to blog for free. I'm talking about the young, aspiring artist who is at the beginning stages of his career and who is looking to break in. See, the difference between Will Wheaton and you is, we know who Will Wheaton is. He's a very well-known actor who is part of the Star Trek and Big Bang Theory franchises, who has 3 million followers on Twitter and makes a killing narrating audiobooks. I'm guessing we can't say the same about you. If you're watching this channel, I'm assuming you're currently at the start of your career and you're eager to start moving up the ladder and making a living with your talents. See, if Will Wheaton writes a piece which appears in the HuffPo website, he will drive 3 million people to that website, which in turn will then generate advertising revenue for the Huffington Post. I think most people would agree that Mr. Will Wheaton deserves some of that money. Nobody's arguing that point, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we are specifically talking about you. In addition to this one caveat, at the end of this video, I will offer up a few other competing thoughts on when you should maybe take a pass on working for free. But for now, I'd like to start by addressing the well-intentioned advice that was given to the aforementioned young artist. Bad advice one, can't pay your rent with exposure. I would argue that you can indeed pay your rent with exposure and that I have done so many times in the past. I know that this is an extremely unpopular fact, particularly on places like Reddit, but the reality is that exposure very frequently leads to paying gigs. The truth of the matter is that nobody is going to hire you if they've never heard of you. You're hired. Having your work out there, it does expose you to potential employers in the future. And people love to toss around the sentiment that exposure doesn't pay the rent. But you know what? Neither does anonymity. Bad advice too. Every single project out there, even the independent ones, are making money completely irrelevant. Assuming you're in the beginning stages of your professional life, your focus should be entirely on advancing your career. How much money this project does or doesn't make has absolutely no effect on your career. If you manage to get four or five projects under your belt, assuming you've done good work, that will help lead to financial success. How much other people are making it shouldn't even be on your radar. Yeah, but why should these people profit off my hard work while I get nothing? They're not. Do not kid yourself. Whatever the project in question may be, believe me, they're going to make just as much money with or without your help. Your contribution does make their job a little easier, but it's ridiculous to believe that they're going to make a profit solely because you were generous enough to donate your time. And speaking of time, bad advice three, your time is worth money. No, it's really not. Look, let's be honest with each other here. If you're at a point in your career where you're being offered non-paying gigs, you're probably either unemployed or working some crappy day job that you hate and are probably making minimum wage or slightly above. I'm a single successful guy. You wanna know what your time is worth? It's actually a very simple calculation. 
Your time is worth exactly what people are willing to pay you for. If you have a job where you're making $15 an hour, then that's what your time is worth. So if somebody asks you to spend all day Monday drawing for them, and as a consequence, you have to take that day off from work, then you can figure $15 multiplied by an eight hour shift means that you are out $120 in lost wages. If I was stuck working a job I hated for 15 bucks an hour, I would consider that $120 a very, very worthwhile investment in my future. But if you're working a standard Monday through Friday job and somebody asks you to work for free on the weekend, then your time is worth nothing. It costs you absolutely nothing in lost wages to do that job. You haven't lost a dime. Look, if you're young, especially if you're still living at home with your parents, even if you're not, one of the greatest assets you have is an abundance of time. Use that to your advantage, weaponize it. There are aspiring artists out there who are already trying to pay a mortgage or raise a kid. It's a lot harder for them to find free time. Your free time gives you an edge against guys like that. Use it. The idea of turning down a non-paying gig on the weekend when the alternative is just hanging out with your buddies or playing video games is obscene. Check it out, his head's bleeding. This is a very competitive industry. If you're gonna pass on opportunities just so you can goof off all day, you will not make it. Bad advice four, your talent is worth money. Mm, very unlikely. Look, I hate to hit you with the tough love. Seriously, I'm sorry to want to tell you this, but no, it's really not. Not yet anyway. Listen. One day, your talent could be the thing that elevates you far above the masses. The name of this channel is Ink and Grow Rich because I sincerely believe you can forge a very lucrative future in this industry. But at this point in time, assuming you're still early in your career, then I'm sorry, but your talents are not nearly worth what you think they are. Why? Because they are unproven. Let me sidestep here for a moment and give you a super basic idea of how this works. First, you get a company like, say, Ford Motors. Ford wants to spend $1 million on four commercials for their F-150. Now I'm using a million dollars as a round number here, but I'm not too far off. Ford will invite three or four ad agencies to pitch their ideas. If you've ever seen the Mad Men TV show, it's not too far off from that. Let's just say the ad agency BBDO wins the account. Next, if BBDO will handpick three or four commercial directors and invite them down to pitch. Eventually, they'll settle on one director and offer him the job. Let's go ahead and say that director's name is Joe Smith. Now, each director is represented by a commercial production company. When they hire that director, BBDO is in essence hiring the entire production company. Let's just say in this case, Joe Smith is being repped by the production company Smuggler. Now, pay attention, because this next part is crucial. Every person that works within that production company is a freelancer. That means that the producer that Smuggler hires to work on this Ford spot may end up working at Hungry Man next month or Epoch Films the month after that. The takeaway here is that every person in this industry builds their career on their reputation. If they did a great job last month on, say, Coca-Cola, they'll be more likely to get hired today on Ford. And assuming that goes well, they'll have no problem getting hired next month on AT&T or whatever comes down the pipeline. So when it comes to hiring a storyboard artist, do you really think that the producer is going to risk blowing a $1 million account with Ford and their entire career on an unknown artist who has never worked in this industry before? Really? Nobody cares how gorgeous the art samples are on your website, because for all we know, it might have taken you five days to draw up those 10 frames. Plus, there's just the normal pressure of working under a deadline. Even if you drew those frames up in a timely fashion at home, are you going to be able to repeat that while under pressure? And for that matter, are you going to be able to take direction well? I mean, sitting at home and making things up for your portfolio is nice and fine, and I do encourage you to do that, but are you going to be able to communicate effectively with a director when put on the spot? I mean, nobody knows. <laughs> if that director asks you for a wide shot, are you going to know the difference between a 10 millimeter or a 20 millimeter, or are you just gonna sit there and implode? Why would they risk their career that they spent the last 10 or 15 years building on an unknown artist if they could just hire a guy like me with 26 years experience who they know for a fact will deliver on time and make them look good? Listen, this past week I got a call to work on a Pepsi spot that's going to air during the Super Bowl. It's being directed by a guy named Lance Accord, who I've been working with for the past five years or so. I pretty much storyboarded all of his spots. I have no idea what the budget is on this spot, but just the airtime alone during the Super Bowl is $5.6 million. $5.6 million, just for the airtime. It does not include the actual cost of shooting the spot, which is probably something in the range of 400,000. So with $6 million on the line, do you really believe the producer of that spot is going to say, 
You know what? Instead of hiring Vinny, who we've worked with for five years and we know will deliver, let's jump on to social media and see if we can find an unknown artist who's never worked a day in his life. That scenario is about as likely as a would-be princess losing a glass slipper or a brother and sister finding a gingerbread house in the woods. It is fantasy land. It is never going to happen. At the beginning stage of your career, the biggest obstacle you've got working against you is your complete lack of experience. So if somebody reputable comes along and is offering you a non-paying gig, please jump at that opportunity. Another point we're gonna make on this debate is this one. Believe it or not, despite the emergence of the global economy in the past decade, this is still pretty small business. Meaning everybody talks to everybody else. There's still an element of truth in the it's not what you know, it's who you know cliche. Every time you're working on a project, you're making contacts. Now, in my experience, people in this field, they have memories like elephants. Every time that I did someone a favor and I worked for free, it was repaid to me a dozen times over. Directors went out of their way to ensure that I was hunted down and hired when they eventually did get paying gigs. Now, following along with that sentiment, I'm gonna tell you a little story. About four years into my career, I was starting to do very well for myself. I had about 10 directors or so who would routinely hire me for all of their gigs. This meant I was working between three and four days a week and was making about 70,000 a year at the age of 28. At some point, I said to myself, if I could just maybe find two more directors to add to that list, I could start making a six-figure salary for the first time in my life. My agents at the time had about 40 other artists that they were representing and they had sort of stopped really pushing for me to meet new directors. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. I drew up something like eight frames of a car commercial, then walked down to Kinko's and printed up a stack of crude flyers advertising my work. I then sent those flyers out to every director that was listed in the LA 411. Again, this is still before the era of email, and so it was a lot of legwork. I must have sent out over 200 flyers. A week or so later, one person called me back. His name was John Barrero, and he was a producer working with a director named Justin Clarenbach. Justin had a regular storyboard artist that he'd been working with for the past few years, but Justin wanted to shoot a five minute short film. It's just something he was doing for his reel, so there was no money in it. They had asked his regular artist if the guy would do it for free, and he just flat out refused. John then found my flyer in the mail, called me up, and asked me if I'd be interested in doing the job. I agreed without hesitation. I drove down to Century City and met with both John and Justin. I wrote down all of their thoughts and ideas for the film, and then I told them I'd run home, sketch it all up, and I'd have it for him in a few days. The next morning I got a call and was told that Justin decided to move forward without storyboards. It happens sometimes. But the producer was very impressed with me anyway and really appreciated that I was willing to help out. A month later, guess who was called with a paying gig? Long story short, I ended up working with Justin for the next 10 years or so and probably made somewhere between uh, $35,000 and $40,000 with him. His original artist who refused to do the job? Justin never called the guy again. That loser lost out on up to $40,000 because he wasn't willing to help somebody out. I've never been able to understand that mentality. That makes no sense. Now, having said that, let me offer you a few excellent examples of may you might want to consider working for free and one where you won't. Any young directors who are currently in or have recently graduated from a major film school like USC, NYU, or AFI. Anybody who is currently working in a commercial production house or advertising agency. I don't care if they're producers or PAs. Let me tell you something. The guys and gals who are working as PAs today will be the producers of the future. Get in good with them now and then milk that relationship for the next 20 years. Any professional working director who happens to be putting together a pet project, whether that's a short film, a spec commercial, or a pitch for a movie or TV show. Any producer who has found a talented young director and is looking to build her reel. Any working professional who's trying to upgrade. See, in this industry, everybody's trying to get one more step up that ladder. Every gaffer wants to be a DP. Every DP wants to be a director. Every director wants to be a writer. If you catch wind of a working DP or fight coordinator or copywriter who's trying to launch a directing career, jump in now and offer your services. Now that I've given you all the reasons why you should eagerly offer your services for free, allow me to talk about the time you're going to not want to work for free. In my opinion, the only jobs you're going to want to refuse are the ones being offered to you by some idiot who has zero pedigree. If someone comes to you and says, I just wrote a screenplay, you should draw it for free because when it becomes a major motion picture, the exposure will set you up for life. If that person's day job is anything other than industry professional, feel free to laugh in his face. Nothing! You've got nothing! Despite everything that I've already said, in a sense, you do want to get paid for every gig that you take. It's just that you're going to be willing to get paid in future opportunities instead of cash. 
the person offering you the job should already be in a position to hire you for future gigs. Otherwise, they're a joke and they should be treated as such. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? See, there absolutely needs to be something in it for you. And exposure means nothing unless the person already has an established, easily verifiable audience. The person offering you the gig either has already broken into the industry on some level or they are to be ignored. In other words, they've already done the legwork. They've gotten their foot in the door. Now they're just gonna hold it open long enough for you to scoot on through. If they can't do that for you, then why waste your time? Look, in closing, I'm just gonna say, I've got no dog in this fight. Whether you do or don't choose to work for free, it does not affect my life whatsoever. So I've got no reason to lie to you. At the end of the day, I can't tell you what decision is gonna be best for you. I can only tell you what has worked very well for me. But consider this. While you are smugly patting yourself on the back for your artistic integrity, other artists far hungrier than you are out there seizing up these opportunities and converting them into lucrative careers. Wouldn't you rather be one of them?